Hello and welcome to this week's episode of the Limitless Landscapers podcast. I'm Paula, your host, and today I'm talking about magical manifesting and what that means for you and your business and what you can learn from little people. Let's go to the show. As the founder of the Landscapers Circle and the Limitless Landscapers podcast, I am here to help you get more money, time and freedom to make your life and business truly limitless. Through my experiences as the owner of a garden design and landscaping business and through tried and tested methods, if you want help with the marketing, managing and growing of your business, then you are in the right place. If you are a landscaper, garden designer, horticultural business or a supplier to the industry, be sure to hit subscribe so you never miss an episode. Now, let's get back to the show. Hello, guys. Welcome to this week's episode of the Limitless Landscapers podcast. How are you? I have started this week uh, not as well as I wanted to. We've just come off of half term here in the UK. So children are back at school, back to a bit more of a routine. But we did have Halloween Monday which meant I had some fun with my best friend in the woods, dressed as pumpkins, creating random videos and images. So that was just a little bit of fun away before the kids came home. We went trick-or-treating and got dressed up again. And it's been quite a celebration this year of Halloween, which has been interestingly fun. So that's what's been going on this week. I haven't been feeling too good. So apologies if I'm not at my best today but haven't been feeling very well for a few days now. So it must be something to do with the weather. We've had so much rain and it's been freezing cold. So I'm just going to blame that for me. So anyway, today I'm talking about a really cool subject. Well, I think it's really good. It's manifestation. Now, I don't profess to be the expert in manifestation, but I thought I'd share with you sort of some real life examples and how you can think about manifesting your reality, your life and what you want from your business. Now, what got me thinking about this is in half term last week, I had literally the best half term I've ever had with the children because we did things every single day, really fun stuff. And we met quite a few professional footballers. Now, if you don't already know, I am a crazy mad Southampton Football Club fan. And so is my young son, who's five. And we're very much football mad in this house. So we are playing football, watching football, going down to the stadium, generally getting involved in all things football, particularly when it's Saints related. So this half term, I managed to get tickets to an exclusive event on the Monday at Saints, which was fantastic. And then also a training session, open training session on the Wednesday as well. So we're down at the stadium twice that week and we'd been to see the match on the Sunday before. And then randomly we bumped into our significant hero. Now, the reason I'm telling you this is because I truly believe what we put out, we get back. So The basic rules of manifestation is you ask the universe something and it is given, but the work in between is you have to be a vibrational match. Now that's very layman's terms. I'm reading this book called Ask and It Is Given. I would definitely recommend it if you are interested in the law of attraction, how it works and how you can potentially create your dream life and and make your dream life a reality. It's quite a difficult book to get your head around because it does mess with your mind and all the preconceptions we've been born with our parents have given us thankfully it's trying to kind of look at at things in a different way but essentially that that's the basics of it and why i'm telling you this is essentially i said to the children like we're going to saints now at the time i didn't know we had tickets for this monday event because i'd only entered a prize draw and there's only 300 tickets and i said to myself going to enter the draw and I think I'm going to win I just know that I'm going to get these tickets because it's going to be an amazing day the kids are going to love it and I'd forgotten about it I just asked the universe put it out there and then it forgot about it and then a couple of days before I got an email dropped into my inbox saying you're a winner and I'd completely forgot I'd entered so of course that was insane for me that was a definite manifestation of what I believed because I believed I was going to win I then just let it go. 
I asked, let it go, and then allowed it to happen. And, and that's the important thing. You can't be in an opposite vibrational state to that of which you want to attract. And I'll go more into this a bit later on. But essentially, I asked the children, right, we've won these tickets. I'm so super excited. And there's going to be special guests there. Who do you think we're going to meet? Well, both children were like, well, I want to meet James Ward Prowse, the captain of Saints Football Club. And I said, brilliant. Well, all you've got to do is ask, believe that you're going to meet him and then let it go and we'll see what happens. Anyway, so we go to the stadium on the Monday. And of course, James Ward Prowse is not there. We meet some under, I think they're under 23 players. I had a fantastic day at the mascot. It was a really great event. Had an absolute ball. And I said, well, maybe, you know, when we're coming out, they said, we didn't see James or Prowse. I, you know, we said we were going to meet him. I said, well, we're coming back on Wednesday. So, you know, keep thinking about it. Keep thinking about meeting him. How are you going to feel? How it's going to be? How are you going to feel when you meet James or Prowse? What's going to happen, et cetera. And uh, I said, because we're going back to the stadium on the Wednesday. <clears throat> then on the Tuesday, we went pumpkin picking. My idea of hell, you pay an extortionate amount for the pumpkins feed the children at lunchtime which they don't eat anything and it's dusty and muddy and full of other people's children so it's not my idea of heaven on earth put it that way and uh, we were walking around and suddenly my five-year-old son says mommy there's James Ward Prowse and I said is it I looked up and he's literally standing a foot away from me so I said to my son why don't you go and see if it is James Ward Prowse so he went up to him and bless his heart, being super brave. He said to him, are you James Will Prowse? He said, yes. I capture it on the photo, which you would have seen on the Instagram on TLC last week. And it made everyone's day, mainly mine and my son's, because we were just like, wow, this is insane. And he was super excited all day, kept asking to look at the photo, said, I knew we were going to meet him, mummy etc etc and it was great because we actually got to meet him one-on-one -on -one in person at of all places a random pumpkin picking farm so what i realized is one children are so much better at manifesting their reality than we are because they have no blocks in place because they're so innocent and young they believe that's going to happen they believe in themselves they believe in the world going to deliver to them what they want so it was never a question in their minds that they were going to meet James Will Prowse. They just was expecting to meet him at one of the events we had planned. And it's also a great reminder that sometimes what you're looking for doesn't present itself in the places where you think it's going to happen. So that's a really easy way to explain, but I didn't expect to see a professional footballer at a pumpkin picking farm on the same day and time that we were there. I expected to see him at the stadium or one of the events that were being put on. So it was quite interesting to realize that you do get what you ask for, but maybe not <clears throat> in the situations or circumstances or when you feel you're going to get it. So that was really a cool manifestation as well. Then we went to the stadium on the Wednesday and we watched the first team training and it was brilliant. Me and my son had a great time. Not sure if my daughter enjoyed it quite as much as me and Grace. And we're obviously the big football fans of the family. And then afterwards, there was going to be a junior signing. And, and again, it was an exclusive event. You had to put your name down. I put my name down at the last minute. Didn't think I'd get the tickets. Didn't get them. So I was kind of like, okay, no worries. We're still here. We're still having a great time. And then about six or seven of the players stayed behind and had photos and signed autographs, T-shirts and whatever merch. Um, so you got to meet them. So essentially we got to meet about six of the players my son got his shirt signed he got photos with them so you can imagine my five-year-old's life has just been like he's had the best week of his life because he's met professional footballers he's met his hero James Will Prowse who he wants to be he's been to the stadium where in his mind he believes he's going to play when he's older and it was just a really magical week of manifestations because yeah, we just, we just believed and asked and it was given because our vibrations matched those of which we gave out. And it was just a really cool week and it, it got me thinking. And I look back on one of my journal entries because I often journal 
And I often map out my life. I think about what I really, truly want in my life. And I think about how I'm going to feel. And I write down, like, how I'm going to feel when X, Y, and Z happens and some stuff like that. And I, and I started looking back and it's really weird because I've actually manifested a lot of things in my life. And the two biggest manifestations, which you might think, yeah, all right, whatever, are my two children. Because basically going back who my daughter's now seven and Grace is five, I really I never really wanted children or marriage. And then it got to a time in my life where I decided that I needed both of those things. And thankfully, Mike, my now husband, agreed to both. And essentially, on my vision board back, yeah, probably nine years ago, I wrote the names of the children that I wanted. And it was Ava and Grayson. And I put those on my vision board. And unfortunately I had three miscarriages in a row before I fell pregnant successfully with Ava Lily. And then obviously great. She was born. And then I really wanted a second child within two years of each other. And essentially I managed, don't know how to make it happen that I had a Grayson as well. So I managed to get both of the children that I'd envisaged nine years previous into my life. And They were, like I say, the names were on my vision boards. I knew I wanted a girl and a boy. I wanted a girl first, boy second, and it happened. And essentially they are born literally two years exactly. There's six days between their birthday dates. So it's quite insane when you think about it in that way. And some people might call it a coincidence. I certainly didn't plan any of this. It was just, I decided that that's what I wanted to happen. And it happened in that way. But there's been so many things that have, that have, lately manifested so even things that could be counted as something bad so I'm going to just take you back to essentially a month or so ago where I started thinking about the people in my business so in my landscape and design business and in TLC and I wasn't 100% happy with a couple of you know what was going on the dynamics I wasn't sure if people were right And essentially within a week of me kind of thinking about this, thinking about what solutions I wanted and putting it out there, I had two resignations come back and it enabled me then that they left of their own accord. There was no need to have any discussions. They left of their own accord, happy to go into their new job roles. And it allowed me to then relook at the businesses and change what I wanted within them. So the structure of TLC has changed quite considerably. And with Aura, we're now building from the ground back up. And But it was weird because I was like, I actually wanted this to happen. And then it randomly happened. And I didn't man- ask, oh, I want them to hand in their notices. What I asked was, what is the solution to this problem? These, and they're not working. This is not working in the business. What's the solution? And it came to me. So it's really cool. The other thing I want to share with you was I have been thinking about setting up a dog sanctuary for a long time. It's been on my plan, my big goal for many, 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 many years. It's still my major plan to get a land, get some land, farmhouse, and run a dog sanctuary and mini farm there. Now, I kept thinking, oh, I can't do this because of X. I'm never going to be able to do this. It feels so far away. It almost doesn't feel real. And I started thinking about the area I wanted it to be in. I was challenged by a a very good friend and coach. And they started to get me to look at the areas, look for actual places to buy. How much is it? How would you fund that? Et cetera, et cetera. Start really looking at your big goals. And essentially, I started doing all that. I decided it's going to be Cornwall, Devon. I'm thinking sort of before Ava goes secondary school. So you're looking sort of four or five years down the line, which brings the the vision forward slightly. And I started thinking, actually, I could do it. I could fund it with X, Y, and Z. I could still work, et cetera, et cetera. So I started, began planning that. And then at a party a few months ago, I was talking to someone I just met at the time, a friend a friend from the gym's wife and I started talking to her and telling her how much I love dogs and she said so do I and I said I want to set up dog sanctuary and she said so do I and I was like what and she was like yeah and I said yeah I'm thinking about doing it in Devon or Paul she was like oh, me too and essentially in that moment I was like there is a reason I've met this person today and since then we are developing 
the dog sanctuary idea and doing it together, which feels less stressful and less big and less scary than if I was doing it on my own. So there are reasons why people come into your life and there are reasons why things happen all the time. And it's this, it's the same when you focus on sort of the negatives because you can control your thoughts, but you're not to fear the uncontrollable thoughts. However, if you're putting a lot of energy and effort around negative thoughts, negative beliefs, then you, you'll manifest this into your reality. So we've all had it. You have a day where everything goes wrong. So it starts off with one wrong thing. And then next thing you know, you've got three or four things all going wrong on that same day. And that's just because of the energy you're putting out there. The vibrations you're putting out there is coming back to you. And I wanted to read an excerpt from, from this book, Asking It Is Given, because a lot of people probably listen to this going, yeah, all right, this is all um, coincidences. Now, I've got a massive list. I wrote them all down before I was doing this podcast of manifestations that I've, I've created in my life through thinking about it, through planning it, through actively then, you know, taking action upon it. You can believe or not, but I choose to believe because if I believe that this is real and true and I can get my mindset in it because that is the main thing you have to have your mind on it at all times there's lots of ways to manifest things and there's lots of ways not to <laughs> manifest as well which is why I'm reading this book quite a few times there's quite a lot of processes in there you can apply and adopt to your life but essentially you have to work at it because if it was easy everyone would be doing it and it's not so easy because people can't get their head around it they can't get their mind in the game they can't control their mindset so therefore they don't actively work on it and then they don't believe that you can change things with your mind now there's loads of amazing people out there that have managed to heal themselves through power of mind there's lots of people who have created the life they love through you know manifestation and their mindset so it's a real thing but you have to work on it and you have to can be consistent and you have to do things that you haven't been conditioned to do so you have to look at how you are feeling you have to acknowledge feelings you have to look at how you're thinking and what you're thinking about you have to actively try and take yourself out of situations that drain your energy I mean all these things are quite easy but they're very difficult and trying to be consistent on that is difficult as well so it's not easy but it's worthwhile and some of you will be saying mm, don't believe it and why then, if I think all the good things and if I think it can happen, I believe in it, I would also get you to think about all your beliefs right now because what do you truly believe? Because I say I believe this, but that deep, deep down, there are many blocks within there that say you do not truly believe in what you're saying. So think about do you truly believe X, Y, and Z? Do you truly believe it will work or accept whatever it might be that you're thinking about? because you need to work through those blocks before you can get to the matching vibration. But anyway, what about those who desire not to desire? So this would be people, we say we desire things and they're still not coming in. So this is what the book says. Desire is a fresh, free feeling of anticipating wonderful expansion. So your inner feeling of anticipation, it's a wonderful feeling. And it's truly the feeling of life flowing through you. But many people, while they're using the word desire, they feel something quite different. And I think this can happen very easy. I mean, I highlighted this entire page because I was like, it's almost talking to me when I truly think I design something, but it doesn't feel like desire. So desire for them often feels like yearning. For while they are focused upon something that they want to experience or have, they are equally aware of its absence. So this is where we're saying, oh, I don't know. I really want that to pull in that landscaping job of £150,000, but why haven't I got it? Or someone else has got it. Why didn't I get it? And so while they're using words of desire, you are offering a vibration of lack. So we need to be in a vibration of abundance, of a feeling that we are open to everything. There is enough for everybody. So there are enough opportunities. There is enough work. There is enough money to go around for us all to be abundant and experience a rich and fulfilling life. Now, it's very hard to be in that mindset and that feeling all the time. So we often drop into a feeling and vibration of lack. They come to think that the feeling of desire is like wanting something they do not have. So 
this is not, this is you in a feeling of lack. So you feel like there isn't enough money, that there isn't enough work, that work is drying up, that, you know, lack, 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 lack. It's not a good vibration to be in because you will not match the vibration of desire and abundance of which will attract the life you want into your existence. <clears throat> so if you keep in mind that whenever you ask, it is always given, then each of your desires will now be pure, non-resisted desire, non-resisted. You have to remove the resistance. And that is the key. You have to remove the resistance. And we all have resistance in one form or another. Many people desire things that they are not currently living fully. And in some cases, they have desired them for a long period of time. And so they think about the thing they desire. And then they think about not having it. In time, they come to believe that the way they feel is the way desire feels, which is not the case. But they are not in the state of pure desire. They are in the state of resisted desire. Often their vibration is more about the absence or lack of what they want than it is about what they want. So without even realizing what they're doing, they are holding themselves vibrationally apart from their own desires. Now, I think that sums up exactly where we all go wrong in this law of attraction, power of manifestation, because we resist. Now, if you look back to the very first example I gave you of meeting the footballing hero, my son has unresisted desire. He desires to meet his footballing hero. He knows there are opportunities to meet him in the place we would expect to meet him. And he just allows that to come in. His vibration is just of, I'm going to meet my footballing hero. And it happened because he's got unresisted desire because he's a child. He hasn't been programmed to lack things as yet. And I'm hoping, you know, that I can teach him a new way, not the way I was conditioned as a child, you know, brought up. It's imperative to think about that, to constantly think about how it feels to be in that state of desire and abundance rather than in the state of lack and, you know, being a vibrational mismatch for what you want. So I think I've talked enough about manifestational magic and magic, and you can allow magic into your life. You just need to believe in it and work on it. So if you need any help, give us a Cool. don't forget I've got a free masterclass dropping next week on the 7th of November if you want it click the link in the show notes and if you need any help with coaching one-to-one -one, or just want to come on board with TLC membership click the link in the show notes and I'll come back to you if you want a free discovery call I am offering them throughout the month of November to have a chat with me about how TLC can work for you in your business and help you make the rest of the year and going into next year bigger and better than ever before so hope you enjoyed today's podcast and i will see you next week